Fellas, I'm just gonna come right out and say it. Yes, I'm actually considering buying a mini LED TV over OLED this year, and it's all Hisense's fault because of their new U8N. This thing has a ton of stuff going for it. It's got me really excited for mini LED, and no, it's not going to dethrone OLED. OLED's always gonna have the best picture quality, but mini LED is getting way better way cheaper and way larger, and what it can deliver is something that OLED might not be able to depending on your situation. And that's why today we're gonna be taking a deep dive into the 85 inch Hisense 2024 U8N, and trust me, you're gonna want to watch this whole thing through because there's a lot of really interesting things I found that will determine whether or not you would want to buy a TV like this. Now, before we get into the meat of the review, I want to let you know Hisense did send me this TV for this review, but I'm not gonna be pulling any punches, and we will be discussing any problems that I run across. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the specs. So the 85 U8N, as the name would imply, is an 85 inch 4K up to 144 Hertz VA panel with I counted 1,296 local dimming zones, basic FreeSync, G-Sync, and VRR support. And speaking of support, it does also come with the ability to show all of the latest and greatest HDR formats, including Dolby Vision and HDR10+, making it a great option for any HDR content you might throw at this TV. But real quick, let's talk about the design. Do be aware, it's certainly no flat Stanley. This thing is thick. It's a real chonker, so certain setups looking for that super thin wall mount might not be happy with that chunkiness, but that comes with the territory of mini LED and overall I have no major complaints other than the stand did feel a little bit cheap to me and it unfortunately was actually bent right out of the box slightly which would definitely make me want to wall mount this and thankfully it does support common 600 by 400 millimeter mounting hardware. Now in terms of the ports, pause if you need to, but do be aware, yes, it does actually have two HDMI 2.1 ports, which can support up to 4K 144, and the other two HDMI 2.0 ports support 4K 60. Now in terms of the price, currently it's actually coming in at a discount of around $2,300 or just under, and it also, I was informed, comes with a two-year warranty, and you can purchase extended warranty, I believe up to three years. So certainly this lower price is going to have a significant impact on my review as I felt like the original 2800 was a little bit high, but is it enough to make this an excellent purchase? Well, let's start off with the color because I actually think overall it's great. It can often look even better than W OLED from LG in HDR thanks to the fact that there's not a white sub pixel and there's no potential washing out which can lead to some really bright colors, but I do think it falls a little bit short of the saturation you can get out of QD OLED. But despite that, yes, colors are gonna look very vivid, very bright, and HDR is incredibly impressive on this 85 inch TV, leading to a level of immersion that I gotta be honest, I've yet to see on any other TV I've reviewed thus far. So of course, I'm sure that will change with even larger and brighter TVs coming out in not too long. But is it accurate? And out of the box, actually, it's not too bad in SDR, and I gotta give it to Hisense. This has way more configurability than I was expecting, allowing me to get it to be nearly perfect in SDR. Now in HDR, I think it might even be a little bit better out of the box, tracking EOTF pretty well, though again, it can be improved through the use of either Calman or simply using the options within the TV itself, which by the way, I'll have the best settings for this TV linked in my Patreon in the description below, as well as affiliate links to this TV if you're interested in picking it up. And the color volume was equally impressive, coming in at 107% DCI-P3, meaning you should get all of the color in the vast majority of HDR movies 
out on the market. But what about the brightness? This has got to be one of the most important metrics for HDR. And I'll tell you guys, my first impressions were, wow, this can get really bright, especially in scenes that might have something like a beach or a sun taking up a significant portion of the screen. And you can see here, even in my testing, yeah, the window brightness, very, very impressive stuff coming in as the second brightest display I have ever measured. Nearly a thousand nits in a 100% window and around 2000 nits in a 10% window, putting it well ahead of even the brightest OLED TVs. However, that's not necessarily the case in actual HDR content, depending on what you view, because even in this high APL scene that's going to stress OLED to its max, it actually technically fell behind the S95C and the LG G4, which means at times the best OLEDs can technically appear slightly brighter in parts of the scene than this mini LED TV. Though, do be aware, again, the overall brightness of the entire screen will likely be brighter in most cases, especially when it's being stressed. But now let's go ahead and talk about its shadow performance and contrast. And here you can see that in SDR, it does pretty well. There is a little bit of shadow crush going on, and it's definitely more noticeable in the HDR test where you can see that a significant amount of shadow detail here was being crushed, but not enough for it to be a major issue, just something that is a small imperfection. And in my contrast ratio checkerboard test, I found overall it does give roughly a 40,000 to one contrast ratio, which to put in perspective is very good for a mini LED TV. I would consider 100,000 to one in this test to be absolutely incredible and around 10,000 to one to be pretty decent. So this is well within the range of very good for a mini LED display but it's gonna fall short to the million to one or infinite to one that an OLED can produce, meaning it won't have quite the same amount of detail as you can get in small objects on an OLED TV. And this does also mean that yes, blooming can be an issue on this TV as with just roughly 1300 local dimming zones, it quite frankly does not have enough dimming zones to effectively suppress all blooming. You will see it from time to time in the form of potential haloing around objects in a very dark scene when the object is bright or inverse dimming if it's trying to control it and reduce the blooming, something that OLED just simply doesn't suffer from. However, I gotta give them some props for their 24P judder control as if you do max it out, while it can introduce some soap opera effect, which may or may not be a turnoff for some buyers, it will basically completely eliminate all 24P judder, allowing for very smooth playback. But what about gaming? Can this TV be used for gaming? And the answer is yes. It's not the fastest display I've ever measured, but at 32 milliseconds for the entire display, plus PC, plus the input is very reasonable for a TV of this size. However, the motion performance isn't that great. Now, it's certainly not terrible at 144 hertz. It's definitely very usable, but when you compare it to something like OLED, well, it's just no match, especially for a super fast OLED like 480 hertz, but even a lower refresh rate OLED is gonna look far clearer in motion than this mini LED, which as you can see in the darker scenes has quite a bit of dark smearing, likely due to the VA panel, which means probably not the absolute best option when it comes to gaming, but definitely very usable. Now, in terms of the text clarity and the subpixel layout, it's gonna be better than OLED, but it still can have some issues depending on what you're viewing because it appears to be BGR, which is not the typical red, green, blue that you would expect or something like Windows would expect when displaying text. And furthermore, because it's not using Using a true glossy finish, it appears to be somewhat of a semi-gloss, this can introduce some very minor blur to the overall image, nowhere near as bad as a matte coating, but not quite as clear as a true gloss, though to be fair, when you're viewing at a distance, this is very unlikely to have a major impact on the overall picture, but it's something that I would like to see them change 
with future revisions. Now, in terms of the viewing angles and uniformity, this, like many other mini LEDs, it's not perfect. It is gonna have poor viewing angles leading to a washed out or desaturated image at significant angles. And it does also unfortunately suffer from some dirty screen effect, which means that certain gray screens or other colors could look slightly dirty if it's taking up a significant portion of the screen. And another issue I found with this TV was that the sound, in my opinion, was not that great. Now it's not terrible, but it was a little bit thin. The timbre wasn't quite right in the mids and bass certainly did seem to lack a lot of the body that I'd hope to see. So if you do buy this TV, I would highly, highly recommend pairing it with a great sound system to get the most out of your immersion. Other issues I did find, unfortunately, was that VRR engaging it within the TV does seem to make the screen dimmer and a bit more dull, which is unfortunate and something I'd like to see them address in a future firmware update. Additionally, my specific unit did have some very, very tiny, probably mostly unnoticeable diagonal scan lines on certain gradients, although I'm unsure if this will affect other models. Of course, we talked about the semi-gloss coating, not quite enough local dimming zones, and then finally, the menu and firmware for me did have a few bugs, which unfortunately did lead me to have to actually unplug the TV as well as reset it to fix them. But once I did that, those bugs never came back. So it's hard to say whether or not it's something you'll face, but it's something I had to deal with. So there you have it. The 2024 Hisense U8N is definitely not a perfect TV. In fact, there's quite a few things that I think Hisense definitely needs to improve upon, but I do gotta give them credit. Their tracking in HDR is really good, and they've been making a lot of improvements to mini LED tech overall that has me very excited for especially their UX series. And that's why this year I'm actually highly considering buying a mini LED TV. It's because mini LED is starting to get closer and closer to OLED. It will have its faults, such as the slower response times, the worst viewing angles, and of course, it's not gonna have the micro contrast of OLED either. However, I'm really excited to see what Hisense can bring with their 98 UX, considering how good this was at its current price. And quite frankly, there's no way I'm gonna be dropping $20,000 or more on a 97 inch OLED TV, but I could potentially afford, depending on the price, a 98 inch mini LED TV. And if it has way more local dimming zones, a better coating and even more improved firmware and brightness, yeah, that could be an excellent option for those of you out there looking for really large sizes at far more reasonable prices. Although don't get me wrong, Really large TVs are gonna be expensive no matter which way you slice it, but even the U8N is very impressive considering its price. Though that being said, because it has a couple of problems, I would like to see them cut that price down in a sale a little bit closer to the low 2000s versus where it is right now, but it still is very competitive at its current price. And I gotta tell you, 85 inches is a very immersive experience and it did make even a 77 inch start to feel a little bit small. So Hisense, you're definitely on the right track and at the right price point, this could be an excellent TV bringing excellent value and a good picture for the right customer. So that's why I'm gonna go ahead and give this one actually right now at its current price, I'm kind of stuck between six or seven out of 10. So definitely a good TV and a good price but not exceptional. And that's where I'm waiting to see what Hisense brings with their U9N and their UX series of TVs. Whether you're looking to connect a new console, gaming PC, or just need a fast and reliable HDMI cable to connect over long distances, Rupro has you covered with their certified 8K HDMI 2.1 fiber optic cable available in sizes of up to 50 feet and can deliver a perfect full 48 gigabits per second connection over distances other cables could only dream of reaching. And with 48 gigabits per second of bandwidth, it can easily drive 8K 60 FPS or 4K 144 FPS 10 bit HDR video through its ultra thin, flexible, and durable housing, and it even supports ER. So, if you're in the market for a cable that can drive a beautiful new TV or monitor, be sure to check out RuPro on Amazon today.